Hi guys, <laughs> welcome to the see this uh, the series finale of Fruits Basket and look, <laughs> I I was able to last the entire episode. I thought I was gonna be able to make it without crying, and then <laughs> and then the fucking oh so it's so sweet guys. I just love it so much. I love it, love it, love it. Oh my god. Okay, so I'm just gonna spoil this. Okay, spoilers right now. Three, two, one. Spoiler alert. You've been warned. Toru and fucking Kyo have a fucking like granddaughter, bro. I didn't ex yo, I did not expect this episode to end with um their granddaughter. When the little girl's holding the rat and the or uh, is the rat and the cat, right? Yeah, it's the rat and the cat. When the little girl's holding the rat and the cat, I'm thinking oh like it's probably their daughter that's gonna be cute i'm gonna like it but no she finds her mama and then her mom's like yo like learn your manners don't call them kyo and toru call them grandma and grandpa <gasps> and then we see i guess they had more than two kids because they have both their i guess the 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 son yeah they have a son and a daughter because of the fact that um the daughter the granddaughter looks like toru the two kids kind of look like a mix of kyo with um kyoko it's interesting i guess because of the mom but then we see dude oh, guys this is what made me cry and it's <laughs> i'm a sadist i know it is me the sadist spirit guide <laughs> Yo, guy, Bobby Wolf, I know, and I cried at seeing Toru and Kyo in their old age holding each other's hands walking, dude. I, with Kyoko's voiceover too, it just made everything much more sad. I just, oh, I loved it so much. I loved it. And the ending credits with everybody with their partners, I loved it too. Okay, guys, let's, we gotta we gotta talk about what the the whole episode now because the whole episode was beautiful. I just like seeing it starts off with comedy. The first quarter is comedy. It's the comedy of just Kyo and Toru on their first date. Of course, um, the girls interrupt it because they want to like have they want to be on the first date too. Because again, I think what a lot of people what makes fruits basket so beautiful this is gonna be a long episode just warning you guys it'll be a 15 minute episode what makes fruits basket so good is the the implication of relationships it's not just the main relationship but it's the implication of what that person represents to the other person and it's never explicitly said until this episode or at least it's alluded to a lot in this episode i mean some characters straight out say what they feel and their positions but other characters kind of don't and i think for toru's friends they've always felt like her replacement for kyoko they've they've both make up kyoko in a sense they're not enough for toru but they both build that gap for her and when um what's the fucking goth girl i'm gonna just call her goth girl i'm gonna be like ditus i'm gonna call them by what they look like <laughs> Um, when goth girl is basically saying like, hey, like you're taking her away from us, huh? And he's like, yeah. And she's like, look, we we get it. Like it's it's basically them giving away their daughter. And I think what's funny is goth girl says, I'm not going to do it. I won't forgive you unless you call me mama, which is an implication because which is a big implication of the fact that she sees herself not only as a mom to Toru, but she's attracted to the master. And I it's obviously seems alluded that her and the master end up together which is um which one in itself is interesting enough but they're, I mean, they're all adult, they're all adults now so i guess it's fine but um it is what it is like it's definitely something that is shocking to see that like these girls are basically giving away the the one person in the world that matters the most to them which is of course um toru sorry my hair keeps like going in my eyes i don't know why um it's getting annoying um, I wonder why. I, I it's probably clipping like that for a number of reasons, but it's okay. It's gonna do that, especially with like the model. <laughs> but um, oh my god, it's so good, guys, so good. And then we we get a little um, 
we get a little flash forward with Yuki and Machi and then Yuki and Machi are adorable too and I love how like they have this little like I wouldn't say fight but he's he has a little test with her where like even after they go visit her brother and she like you know he's he's gloating of the beauty of their relationship they have a little scene together where he gives her the key to his apartment because Yuki's moving far away I think the biggest thing about like if there's anything we learned from this um episode or like the the message is trying to convey is like going forward and you know doing great things is the most terrifying thing in the world but it should never be something that um tears you away from doing that and we see that especially with all the characters going their own separate paths now that they're not tied to akito no more but kyo did, did say something interesting he said it's a new banquet it's different and I, th I it's so accurate because the the power of love in this is is spread out and the, like the ideal like adopted being someone's adopted father someone's being adopted mother and i think the what what the show really does it, it makes me think back to the movie the crow and the movie the crow um eric draven says this to the junkie girl um when she's you know fucking around with that shit and he goes like in the eyes of children mother uh, god mother is god and i and I, it, it rings in my head because of the fact that looking at all the characters who've kind of felt adopted by toru's love they've supplemented that especially for yuki in yuki's case the love that toru was given him was never romantic that he never wanted romantic love from toru but what she gave him in love made up for the hole that his mother could not give him and it's so beautiful and he finally admits that that like i see you as my mother you've given me the love that only a mother can give it's like that's like the uh, second in sebring from uh of mice and men like this is not what it is only baby scars i need your love like a boy needs his mom oh wait i need your love like a boy needs his wait what was the lyric what was the lyric? I was like a baby. I remember the lyric. Oh my god. I, it's one of my favorite songs. It's like it's such a classic like metalcore song. But you guys get what I'm saying? Like, I think every character has felt like the ripple effect of what Toru has. And every other character is discussing like their futures going on. We see a monkey dude who dresses up as a girl. He, I guess, cross dressing is something that he did for his own like confidence is finally getting with um shigure's editor the person he's resonated with the most um atori is getting with uh, the best friend of his ex-girl um of course ayame with uh the his right hand the one person in the world that's always stuck by him and known his secret and still like was always dedicated to him Hats okay hataharu of course with isu um yeah suzu um yeah there's a lot of the only big plot hole is rin i don't think we ever get a conclusion what happened to rin or ren yeah rin which is akito's mom we never get a conclusion on what happens to her that's the i think that's the only big plot hole in this entire show is we don't know what happened to her but um other than that what else did we get we got um you know momiji kind of just like oh man like they're taking haru away we get the two younger ones um Kind of being in love with each other and oh, they're so cute together oh, man this whole episode was just so cute i fucking loved it so much oh my god i love how everyone has it and especially when yuki gives the big like speech of love to toru it is very accurate that she, toru's god she's the new god but they, they don't need a contract they don't need anything that akito like predecessor had like the love itself was something that just needed to be there not the contract not this undying loyalty just the love itself could carry on beyond generations i think again like i said like like to a lot of people you know the children of course in the eyes of children um god is the god is mother our mother is god you know what i mean you, you guys know what i mean like that is very apparent in um the relationships that all the the zodiac or extra say ex zodiac members have and it's so ha i'm so happy that everybody gets a happy ending and 
I've never so I think if you guys see my like earlier videos when I say like bro I vibe with Shigure so much especially in episode one and two I've never vibed more with Shigure more than I see him with Akito and he's like teasing her as like oh, I guess that means I have to come along with you like Shigure and me bro Shigure and me yo we the same person bro he's a dog I'm a wolf we're both canines but like when it comes to toxic women we just love them. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. I just love Akito. When I saw Akito all prettied up, I was like, "Oh, she's." I was like, "Akito, how are you doing?" <laughs> she's so pretty. I loved her. I loved Akito. Akito is my best girl in this show. I know everyone's gonna fight me on that and fight me. Then I don't care. I don't care if you fight me, but it's okay. I. <laughs> oh, we're dapper enough. We can pull her. You know, she likes canines. Well. Wait till she gets a load of us. Um, <laughs> but yeah, dude. Everyone has a happy ending. Everyone has a... We don't see the send-off party. That's the sad part. Is we don't see the send-off. But I don't think we need to. Because... We know. Like, everyone's happy, dude. Everyone's happy. Just seeing the flash forward of... At, um, Their granddaughter just roaming around... I would I assume is the master's old dojo it's just heartwarming it's just it's what the show doesn't do is leave a bad taste in your mouth at all it leaves this beautiful satisfying taste of just you get what you wanted and as much as pain you're put through in this world as much heartbreak and anything like like you really have to push yourself and I I for one enjoyed that so much I think it's the most accurate depiction of um life in a sense it's romanticized of course but it's it is still a very accurate interpretation that you're going to go through the hardest things in the world you're going to go through things that you don't feel like you can even survive that you don't even think you can like persevere through but when you do it it's when you're able to do it you're able to see the light at the end of the tunnel you're able to find your inspiration and you're able to like go forward and i think that's the best part of this entire um I want to say franchise uh series in a nutshells like don't stop keep going forward it is okay to cry it is okay to be selfish and it is okay to allow change into your life and it's okay to to, to seek things beyond that you think you deserve Se episode or season like i was like oh, episode one to episode now yuki didn't believe he had any like he would find somebody who sees him who vibes with him who understands him and now he has machi Kyo thought he was going to be cursed forever to be lonely, to be poisoned, and to, you know, to be this kind of punching bag for all the family and to be this despicable person that no one was ever going to truly like or truly tolerate. And at the end, he's with the one person in the world who tolerates him and is loved by everybody. I would even argue that people love Kyo more because of that, because he's with Toru now. In not in a superficial way, but in a way of like she chose you, the one person in the world who like loves everybody and respects everybody. She chose to love you. That says something about your character. And I don't know what else I could talk about more in this series. It's just it's wrapped up in a nice bow. Of course, there's the whole Rin Ren. We don't know what happened with her. She's a character that cannot be saved, I guess. But it's fine because everybody else was able to be saved. Akito was saved, although. Izuzu still feels grievances about him. It's okay to feel. It's okay not to forgive somebody. It really is okay not to forgive somebody. It's not a bad thing. But you have to be able to go forward from that. Like not able to forgive somebody. It's not about forgiving or forget. It's about. It's about moving. It's moving forward, and for yourself. I think that's the hard part for Izuzu is that she doesn't know how to move forward because he feels like having her feelings. The feelings that she has for Akito being such a bitch, he's like, no, like I feel bad if I feel like an asshole. And everyone's like, no, you shouldn't feel bad. You're allowed to, you're allowed to feel the way you want to feel. That it's perfectly accurate, you know. And I, I totally vibe with that. In the biggest in that show. But yeah, guys, Roots Basket is. If I had to put it in a rank, I'd say it is in the most essential category, S category, of 
if you're an anime if you're an anime lover an anime connoisseur if you're new to anime if you're dipping your toes in anime if you're dipping your toe into anything like of this type of media roots basket is probably the the most it is just it overall as a series will leave you feeling so many different emotions but i think the biggest takeaway from it all is that you can you can keep going forward and no matter how hard life gets once you go forward you'll see that it's all worth it in the end as long as you believe in yourself and you love yourself and i think that's one of the most powerful messages to to display in a show of these characters who are on the surface level perfect but it, and like in the deeper aspect of it they're so broken they're so battered they're so um haunted by their past whether it's ayame wishing that he could have stood up for yuki whether it's um uh heart ha um hatsuri who regrets never having to uh having to erase his first love's memory it's us it's so many things that these characters are just these surface level just you're looking just look happy you're lucky people who deep down inside suffer the most with all these with all this baggages and it doesn't help the akito just you know piling it on them but again so many oh, so many amazing life lessons to be taken from again if you're again new to anime if you're a connoisseur of anime whether you fall in the middle between those two roots basket especially the 2011 i think this is what it is 2011 2014 this version alone is something that it's, it is a treat to the fans of the manga it is a treat to the fans of the old series it is just a treat overall and i highly highly recommend it. do yourselves a huge favor and check it out from episode because i honestly this is a series i could see myself revisiting in a month when i feel like i want to have a good cry i could watch episode one and i'm all the way over here and it, oh my god it's just so good it's just so good i just love it so much but yeah guys i'm gonna end the video here i'm already past my my two minute mark <laughs> i'm already two minutes past what i was gonna end it at but guys fruits basket's over i don't know what i'm gonna do every tuesday now if i can't watch fruits basket in the morning but um i hope everybody has a beautiful day it is i the sadistic spirit guide poppy wolf saying peace out and remember, I am your demon. Have a wonderful day.